Hello and welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today we'll be talking about Boundary. Boundary can be found under the Surfaces module, which is this pull-down menu here. You got Animation, Polygons, Surfaces. And then under the Surfaces menu, and there's Boundary right here. Boundary is a curve function, which means it uses curves to create a surface. Uh, so boundary, as the name kind of implies, it takes your curves that you've created and uses them as a boundary of the surface that gets made. So first, we'll need some curves. I'll go to uh, the Create CV Curve Tool. And you can use any of these curve tools. They have EP Curve Tool, Bezier Curve Tool, lots of different tools you can use to create curves. But CV is what I typically use when I'm just making a generic curve without any real necessary need for the other kinds. Um, so uh, yeah, I'll just make a couple curves with no real rhyme or reason to them just for demonstration, but so just kind of click around. There's one. I'll just make something crazy here. Because crazy is always fun. And I'll just kind of move these around a little bit. So right off the bat, you'll notice that they're not necessarily touching. I'm going to hide my grid. So I just have all these kind of curves everywhere. I go to Surfaces, Boundary, and we get this. Now this is the surface that Maya generated based on these curves and the, their options in the Boundary options. And it's a little bit uh, wacky, not a whole lot of control. But just so you I just wanted to demonstrate that you don't need curves that are touching, like in other functions that we've gone over previously or as of this recording. They don't have to be touching, and they definitely are usable. It's just whenever they are more of a perimeter or a, a touching boundary that's enclosed, you get a little bit more control over exactly what you'll get. Because I obviously had no idea this shape was going to look like this. But you can uh, grab some CVs and move them around and you'll see how the history affects the surface that is generated. Like so. And just to show you a different kind of boundary as a, what I typically would consider a standard boundary method would be to create curves that do touch or are very close to touching at the ends. So I just again make a couple curves. And you don't have to have four either. You can have different numbers of curves. I'll do a, a three curve uh, shape here. And I'll just adjust some points just to have a bit more interesting shape. hide my grid. So we got these curves. This is more like what I would expect. I select these surfaces boundary and we have this kind of shape up here. And this is more like uh, the kind of control I would come to expect when I'm wanting to create a surface. You can see that it very uh, obviously fills the space between these curves in a logical way. Um, and that's because the curves are making more of a quote unquote boundary. So let me uh, hide this surface, Control H. So one thing about the curves you'll notice, or a couple things, is that they are not touching at the ends. That's not required. Uh, there's three curves. You know, before I had four. You need at least three. Three is the minimum number of curves for a boundary. You can have four or more curves to create a boundary. But you need at least three to uh, get that shape. So let's delete these, start over a little bit, and look at our options. So go to surfaces, boundary, options, edit, reset, make sure I'm on my default options here. All right, curve ordering is the first one. We have two options here for automatic or as selected. Common endpoints, which that comes into play with the endpoint tolerance, whether this is optional or required. If we turn required on, the endpoint tolerance is uh, ungrayed out and becomes usable. We'll get back to that curve range, complete or partial, and then output geometry. 
Well, first of all, with output geometry, I've already done a video going over the polygon settings here. If you scroll down, you'll see a lot of settings under this polygon option. Instead of spending, you know, 30 minutes going over all of these, just click over here at my convert nerves to polygons video. It literally goes over all of these exact options. Because that's all this is doing for output geometry is converting nerves, which is the default output, converting them to polygons using these settings. So yeah, check out that video for a greater understanding of what all these settings are. We also have subdivisional surfaces and bezier here, which we'll get over a different video as well. So for output geometry, for this video, we're going to focus on nerves. So back up here to curve ordering, by default, is automatic, which means I just selected all of them and hit apply. Didn't worry about the order. So let's worry about the order now when we go to as selected, and let's make some curves. All right, so I got these guys. If I just select them all with my automatic setting, we get this result. And you'll notice the surface doesn't necessarily stretch itself to uh, touch all the curves. Just all these curves are influencing the surface. So with curve ordering set to as selected, it means that the selection order of the curves makes a big difference in how the shape is created. If I choose a curve and then choose them in order going around the boundary and hit apply, I'll still get a twisted shape but this is because of the curve directions of how I made them. Because it is twisted in this way, if I select one of these two side curves and go to edit curves, reverse curve direction, it will fix that issue. So let me go and delete this and do it again. Let's see if I still get that issue. Going in order, going the other way this time, and hit apply. You'll see now my surface is made just fine. Now is when I started with this top curve. We can start with other curves in this case, and we may get different results, like so. Again, we'll need to uh, reverse the direction of one of these curves. So depending on which curve you start with and what order you go in, and also the curve direction, depending on uh, what kind of shape is made, especially when your curves are not touching like this and all the curves are, are influencing the shape as opposed to dictating the shape. So I'd like that. That's using an as selected curve ordering. Automatic is typically just do automatic again hit apply automatic is typically pretty safe um, but you know you just in case uh, you ever need something very specific automatic doesn't necessarily like if I really wanted the surface to go from this curve to this curve as opposed to the way it's doing now I would need to use as selected and make sure I chose them in an order that would result in what I wanted which wasn't that there you go so I had to choose one of these upper or lower curves first to get this kind of result. And that's be again because the curves are not touching, they're not going to dictate the boundary, they're just going to influence it. Delete that. And next, common endpoints right now is optional, obviously. Our endpoints are not touching at all. So having common endpoints is an optional uh, function of the tool. You can choose to have common endpoints be required in which case this particular arrangement may not work anymore apply yeah no surface is created because these endpoints are not touching or not common now a surface actually was created if I go to my outliner you see I do have, I have an old one here apparently let's delete that one I do have boundary surface right here it's just not functional at the moment if I keep that boundary surface in play and manipulate my curves to become like to have a common endpoints the surface will be created thanks to history like so And that's with a required common endpoint. Let's keep required on for a while since we're going to go over the next one, which is endpoint tolerance. 
Your two settings for endpoint tolerance are global and local. Global, by default, will use a tolerance that is set within Maya's preferences, a global setting. If you go to Window, Settings, Preferences, Preferences, and when the preferences uh, win window appears, you hit Settings, and at the very bottom you have Tolerance, Positional, and Tangential. In this case, we're looking at Positional, so by default for the global tolerance of the boundary, it's 0 .00010. So if you're ever wondering what that value is, this is where you can find it and also change it if you wish. Or you can use a local tolerance and set your own using this slider. What this tolerance means is the endpoints don't have to be touching, but they have to be touching or at least close enough for it to work. Let me just grab this endpoint and move it a little bit. We'll just use one. Just move one for now. So if I select them in order, hit apply, my service is not there, but if I increase the tolerance, so I need to increase the tolerance of the service I've already made, endpoint tolerance over here in the channel box, if I click on the boundary one input selection, have an endpoint tolerance setting, which I can adjust. If I middle mouse click and drag that setting to increase the tolerance, then that gap no longer matters and the surface gets filled in. So that's using endpoint tolerance local and using your own tolerance that you can adjust over here in the channel box or with this slider before you create the boundary itself. Let's delete this and let's go to the next one which is curve range complete or partial and we've been using complete curve range this whole time so far so partial now, if we again use the same curves as before, same setting with the local tolerance increased a little bit. So this gap is not an issue. Hit apply. Might have to increase that tolerance a little bit more, it looks like. There we go. So my surface has been made with a partial curve range, which if you'll notice under the inputs in the channel box, I have sub curve one, two, three, and four. If you click any one of these, you have a min-max value that you can adjust. And what these subcurves allow you to do is uh, adjust the surface slightly based on using a partial curve from uh, instead of a whole curve. And this can be a little finicky, especially with boundary. All these op all these uh, surfaces options have, or most I should say, have uh, this partial curve range option. Some of them are more useful than others. If I adjust this max value down slightly, you can see a little bit of a shift and the surface kind of breaks. I might need to increase the endpoint tolerance. And I think the reason why the surface breaks is because of the uh, endpoint tolerance. Let me increase this up to 5. Actually, let's go to 50. Endpoint tolerance of 50. And then adjust these values more. Okay, now we get more, more uh, room to work with. But what it's doing is it's, instead of using the entire curve to generate the boundary, it's using partial curve. And the ordering of these is based on the ordering that you, you uh, made the boundary to begin with. But you'll see how this is a good example. I'm able to, essentially it's saying this curve is no longer from point here, this point to this point is now generating the surface based on using just this section of that curve. And because my endpoint tolerance is so high, it's still within that tolerance, this large of a gap. So using this kind of value works. You can also use a min value and go the other way, like that. So if you want a very specific area of the curve to use for your boundary, you can with these subcurves. And you'll have to adjust your tolerances and such for the endpoints because it will adjust that as well. Okay, that's essentially the gist of all these options. I do want to go over what to do to have a clean surface or a cleaner surface. So to explain getting a cleaner surface with boundary, I'm going to first just create one using the curves we already have. 
uh, create, uh, I'm sorry, surfaces, boundary, options, increase my tolerance up a bit because I have this gap down here. Uh, go ahead and use a complete curve range. We don't need subcurves for this demonstration. Boundary. So we have this surface. I'm going to move it over here to the side just so we have it here for comparison's sake. And I'm going to delete this surface's history so that whenever I do adjust these curves at all, this surface will not also uh, clean up so that I lose my comparison. So I'm going to select my surface here, go to Edit, Delete by Type, History. That deletes the history from the surface, so whatever I do to these curves will no longer affect that surface. So these curves, if I hit Control A to open the Attribute Editor and take a look at them, we have some settings here for how these curves are constructed. This particular curve has two spans. This curve has two spans. This curve has four spans, and this curve has three spans. So they're a little bit different with the number of spans they have, which can generate a kind of unclean result when it comes to the surface. So what I'm going to do is rebuild these three curves, which had fewer spans, or the fewest spans, and rebuild them to equal four, which is the highest number I have in my four curves. So I'm going to select this one, go to Edit Curves, Rebuild Curve, options. There's a lot of settings in the rebuild curve uh, option box here. I want you to check out the rebuild curve video I have which will go over all of these settings. It's a long one. It takes about a half hour. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here but the main thing we're going to look at right now is the number of spans. So I'm going to rebuild these three curves. I'm going to change the perimeter range to zero to number of spans just for a little bit of a cleaner look. Number of spans is four. That's all I'm going to change and hit rebuild. So I've rebuilt these curves now. If I look in the attribute editor, this curve now has four spans. This curve has four. This curve has four. And of course, this one still has four. Control A to close the attribute editor. So now I'll select my curves in the same order as before. Surfaces, boundary. Now I have this surface, which if I Deselect the two, you can see the slight difference with uh, this little imperfection in the old one. But if I select them both, you'll see a big difference in how clean this surface's wireframe is compared to this one. So a clean surface, I think, is important. Having equal numbers of spans in your curves uh, helps with that. So keep that in mind. That's one thing I typically do is I'll create all my curves to get the boundary shape I need. But and after I make the curves and get the shape I need, I will rebuild them to have equal spans. And I typically equal the higher number. So whatever curve I've made that has the highest number of spans, I'll typically uh, match that one and get a clean surface. You can also use isoparms from surfaces as your curves, which we've demonstrated in other tools before. If I create a nerve sphere, you could potentially select a curve from the sphere and use it as a uh, curve in your boundary. If I delete that curve, I just kind of move these shapes over here just to kind of include the curve a little bit. Just like this uh, isoparm. Actually this one. This isoparm. Select these curves. Surfaces, boundary. I'm going to reset my settings. Edit, reset. And boundary. And it creates a surface. And it uses that isoparm from the sphere as an influencer in this surface. So if I adjust this sphere you know, it does affect the surface with because of history. So yeah, I think that covers pretty much everything you need to really know about uh, boundary. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned a little something. Hope you liked the video. Comment, subscribe. Uh, if you have any requests or suggestions for future videos, definitely let me know. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll talk to you later.